Hey guys, what's up? Pat here from Mountain Sledder. Here we are out riding today and I uh, just wanted to talk to you guys about storage and where you can carry all your gear that you're going to need when you're riding in the mountains. As you know, you need a lot of stuff. You need all your safety equipment uh, in case anything goes wrong out there. And you're also going to need warm layers, food, everything like that. And in my case, I bring a lot of camera equipment with me every time I ride. So I need a place to put that all. And uh, this is what we're using this year for that. So I wanted to show this tunnel bag to you guys. For those that haven't seen, this is the Lock and Ride Flex Brant Large Bag from Polaris. So we'll just go over some of the features, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. So personally, when I ride, I'm always bringing a lot of camera equipment, so that's a main concern for me personally, but I know for other people, it's just more about safety equipment and that kind of thing. We usually carry a lot of stuff, and uh, in particular, I want to get that camera gear off my back. I'm getting a little bit older, so I like to get that weight onto the tunnel, and um, this is the solution that carries quite a bit of uh, stuff for me. So the things that I'm looking for in a tunnel bag, first of all, I want it to be an easy on off solution. I want to be able to take it on and off the sled easily and I don't want a lot of extra hardware or stuff dangling off the sled. That was my uh, one major consideration. Another was I want it to be low profile. I don't want the tunnel bag getting caught on little punji trees or getting caught up on the snow and dragging the sled down, slowing it down when you're riding in the powder. So that was another big concern. And then uh, number three for me is capacity, the ability to carry quite a bit of stuff. So this bag kind of ticks all those boxes and I'll just tell you a little bit more about that but let's just take a look into the bag itself. So the Lock and Ride Flex Barant bag large is a clamshell style tunnel bag and it is a water resistant bag. So it comes in two sizes. This one is the large and then there's a medium size that comes to um, about this point on the sled. So you know it's about two-thirds of the volume. Uh, this one Polaris says I believe is 15 liter volume. So uh, it's a reasonable amount of space it's not a ton, but it's, uh, it's a good amount for uh, backcountry riding. So it's pretty quick and easy to get into the tunnel bag. You can get into it with the buckles on either side, which is really nice depending on which side you've uh, gotten off the sled. Or sometimes if you're parked on a side hill, you know, one side doesn't have access because it's kind of buried in snow a little bit. So the buckles on both sides allow you to get in from either side. So that's great. And they're just nice big buckles that are easy to handle with gloves on. So you just click those open and um, the clamshell opens up. The other cool thing about this clamshell is you can kind of just plop it into the snow and use it as like a parts tray or something like that to keep all your tools and that kind of stuff out of the snow if you need to. So that's handy, it comes completely off. But usually I just tip it over and, and let it dangle off the side of the sled. Now on the top, uh, we have a zippered lid for this bag. The older style bags used to come with a roll top and I, I, I don't know if they still make those or not, but this one has the zippered lid and I think this is more common now for the large one. So the zips open both ways. You get a large flap, I'll show you that in a second, but first of all, you've got this zippered pouch on top. So again, the zips are on both sides, which is pretty handy uh, in that, depending on which side of the sled you're on, you can access whatever you need in there. And uh, I usually just keep my saw in here and I put wet gloves in it later. Stuff that I'm not worried about getting wet because snow does tend to get under the clamshell a little bit into this area. So as long as you're aware that that's why it's mesh and it's just stuff that you don't really care about getting wet. Now inside the zippered bag, this is a water resistant bag, mind you, and I'll talk more about that later, but due to the zippers. flap opens fully up and it comes with this uh, customizable tray inside. So as you can see there's a number of little dividers and they just have a hook and loop on both sides that you can adjust to kind of get however you want. And that's really great because it, it prevents all these like small compartments, the things in them from bouncing around excessively when you're going up and down a whooped out trail. You can kind of compartmentalize everything the way that you like it. I really like that. 15 liters is what Polaris says this tunnel bag can hold, which is sort of a medium amount. There's a couple other bags that they have. The Adventure bag is a, is a little bit bigger, but shorter and taller. Um, and the Sport bag also, so those are other options. But in terms, just so you can see what I carry in here personally, this is where my little camera goes normally. I've got an extra lens. Here's just a little bit more camera stuff and um, high powered flashlight for when it gets dark. I've got my first aid kit here and just an extra little multi-tool. Bright powered flashlight, I have two because we're shooting them today, but otherwise uh, I only carry one normally. And this is my tool kit. It's not actually a DJI drone, 
but um, I've got all the tools that I need in that little kit there. This is just a little emergency um, pot and stove set that's there in case we need to have a night out or need an emergency meal. I've got a uh, snowmobile uh, tow strap in there and this is just an emergency uh, bivy sack in case again we have to do an overnight or there's a first aid incident and here I have uh, freeze-dried food that I can heat up with the stove. So good storage area and water resistant. So in terms of the compartment uh, with the zipper the bag is rated as water resistant. Some people will complain, oh, well, I, I need it to be a waterproof bag. I don't personally feel that it needs to be truly waterproof because we're out in snow. We're not typically in, you know, like a deluge of pouring rain or something like that. Maybe if you flipped your sled into a creek upside down, yeah, you're gonna get water in, but um, I think the risk of that is pretty low, hopefully. That doesn't bother me at all that it's just considered water resistant, but the zipper is water resistant and everything. So uh, I don't really, I haven't had any experience with snow getting inside the bag. Although I do bring it inside to dry out every single night, just to make sure that all my tools and everything are dry. And that's easy to do. And I'll show you how that works with the lock and ride flex system. So the lock and ride flex system is one of the priorities that I kind of wanted in a tunnel bag storage solution in that it can come on and off the sled quickly and easily and it's still secure on there so when you're bouncing down the trail the sled the the bag doesn't come loose so it's really simple there's these two posts that are mounted to this sled tunnel and basically all you need to do is just hold up on these little tabs on the side and that releases the bag and then it slides out at the front so these little tabs just go in at the front So it comes off that easy. I bring it in the house, dry it out every night, and you can organize all your gear at home uh, where it's dry before you even head out for the day and then just hold it with this little handle that's easy to carry it with. So throwing it back on the sled is just as easy. Basically these tabs go in at the front here on any matrix sled. And if you have an access sled, you can buy an adaption kit that allows you to adapt this bag to it. And then for the back, basically you just hold the tabs up, line up the little posts here and click it down and then I always make sure to push the tabs down because the first time I used the bag, I didn't do that and um, one came loose. The bag didn't come off, but I could see that it was bouncing like this down the trail. And so now I always just make sure to push it down and push the tabs down and double check it. And I haven't had any problems since that first day. So that was kind of user error, I think in that case. One last feature to talk about is uh, the optional shovel mount adapter so that you can purchase separately uh, a mounting harness that goes onto the top of the bag if you want to mount a shovel onto the bag. I choose not to do that because fetching my camera equipment often throughout the day many, many times, opening and closing, opening and closing, I don't want that extra bit on there on top of the lid that I'm going into it and out of constantly, but that is an option that you can purchase separately. So just a couple of pros and cons of the Lock and Ride Flex Brant large bag. I really like how low profile it is. You can see on the sled here, it's not in the way. Your feet don't hit it hopping over side to side. It's not getting caught on branches and punges and, and snow and stuff like that. So it's really low profile. It looks cool. Uh, I love the look of it and it's OEM quality. So you know that it's built well and obviously with the, uh, the OEM attachment system. So that all works great. The other thing I like about it is the compartments inside that you can adjust to your liking. A couple of cons of this bag, in my opinion, it's 15 liters. So I wish it was a little bit bigger or that um, it could expand a little bit, maybe to accommodate a jacket or something else. Um, but with the zipper top, there's really no way to expand the volume to allow any more. So you just kind of want to be confident when you buy it that that's about how much space I need and, and not anymore. Some people might see the water resistance as a con. As I said, I don't really, that doesn't really bother me. However, if you want a fully waterproof bag, then this one is just considered water resistant. And one other thing that I mentioned as before, you just really wanna make sure that the tabs are, are locked into place when you install it. And that way you don't have to worry about it uh, coming loose or anything like that. Um, just make sure those tabs are pushed down and you should be good to go. The biggest drawback, I guess you could say to this bag is the cost of it. It's quite expensive. This bag runs $499 Canadian, which is $380, I believe, US. So it's quite an expensive piece of kit to add. But I think because of the solution that it offers, that low profile and everything else that we've talked about, it, it seems like it's worth it to me.